But why Florida, Daniel? It's awfully far from Boonesboro. Well, when that fellow Mayberry passed through the fort last summer, he did a lot of talking about Florida. He said there weren't too many Indians, mostly Seminoles, good land, and the air is supposed to be warm all year round. And most important, there's room enough for everybody. Well, if it isn't Florida, it must be the Garden of Eden. According to this map, we've still got a ways to go before we get to Mayberry's place. Daniel, look. A tree growing right out of the water. Oh, it's even more beautiful than I had imagined. Savages run. Lucky for them you came along or I'd have killed them all. They're savages, nothing but animals. Oh, that depends on your point of view. Oh, thank you. You know, we're certainly grateful that you came along. I don't think we could have lasted much longer. I'm Fletcher Cameron. This is my wife, Rhonda. She's a little oversensitive at times, but otherwise an intelligent woman. I'm pleased to know you, ma'am. This is my friend, Mingo, and I'm Daniel Boone. Boone? Not the Daniel Boone. Well, I don't figure the world could tolerate more than one of us. Well, who would think we'd meet another celebrity in this wilderness? Perhaps you've heard of me, uh, Fletcher the Flamboyant? Well, I don't wander too far afield from Kentucky. Uh, oh, uh, well, we've never had the pleasure of performing in Kentucky. Uh, you're uh, a magician? Not a magician, my friend. An illusionist. A master of deception. I've traveled the four corners of the earth. Captivated the crown heads of Europe. Performed in the shade of the Egyptian pyramids. Entertained on a barge in the River Nile had the statue of Apollo as a backdrop in Athens. The world of illusion speaks a universal language, gentlemen. May I fix you something to eat? Oh, well, we wouldn't want to put you in any trouble. <laughs> That's the least I can do for saving our lives. I insist. Uh, unpack the silver veranda and the Haviland china. Uh, I'll help, Mrs. Cameron. Oh, uh, it's all right. Uh, I've been tamed.
that's quite a piece of foolery. He made that gold coin come right out of pure air. Sheik Ali Bey offered me a small fortune for the secret of that illusion, but I declined. Professional ethics, you know. If I'd been there, I would have sold him the trick. Ethics included. <laughs> I'm afraid my wife doesn't understand the value of talent. You cannot buy genius, you're born with it. It's something you hold sacred, over and above money. You see, genius is power, and power has meaning. It dazzles the eye like a, a brilliant diamond, captures the minds and hearts of men. Power to command, power to control, power to mystify. What? And now I'm going to show you an illusion that dazzled the entire court of King Louis XV. Well, now, how in the tarnation did he do that? Illusion, like my husband told you, Mr. Boone. The quickness of the hand deceives the eye. Yes, ma'am, it sure does. Huh. You ought to learn that, Mingo. It might come in handy if you decide to lift a scalp. <laughs> I know a few medicine men who would give their eye teeth for such a trick. <laughs> what are people like you doing in this desolate region? Well, we're on our way to New Orleans to board a ship for South America. We lost all our money back east in a card game. My husband was winning, and then somebody recognized him as a magician. He does a few card tricks in the act. So they accused him of cheating, and they took all the money away, including ours. So, we're going to New Orleans the best way we can. The hard way. Well, in that case, I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. Gentlemen. Your reputation, Mr. Boone, regards you as a man among men. The uh, first man of the wilderness. It seemed apropos, therefore, that I should extend to you in this godforsaken place a command performance. <laughs> Perhaps, Rhonda, you could help me.
finished yet. Get him. We meet again, white man. I am Unta, son of Hotala, chief of all the Seminoles. We're not looking for any trouble. You will all die. <laughs> Strong, make a good lodge. Soft, very good. This white man, big medicine. White man's trick. Ducky! The soil of the Seminole is forbidden to the white man. To come here means death. We were on the way to the white settlement. It is not here. It lies toward the river. I hear the voice of a bird. I hear it, but I cannot see it. Yet it is very near. This white man, this big medicine, this bare hands, he can snatch the unseen bird from the air before your very eyes. I see no bird. Show him, Fletcher. Show the great chief of the Seminoles the wonders and fire you possess, especially the fire. Just follow the trail west. You ought to get to New Orleans in three days. Thank you, Mr. Boone, so much for everything. Good luck in South America. I'm sure they've never seen entertainment like yours before. Be careful, Fletcher. We'll be fine. Bye. Entertainment. Those savages weren't entertained. They were terrified. I held them in the palm of my hand. They weren't an audience, they were my subjects. Yeah. Daniel, I'm a man of perseverance and determination. But you talked me into it. According to this map, you ought to be getting pretty close to Mayberry's place. Hmm. The end of the trail. You know, if the country he told us about is just half as pretty as this is, there won't be any trouble getting settlers down this way. Daniel, did you notice the look on Fletcher's face when he was watching those Seminoles retreat in fear? He seemed to be enjoying himself. It did kind of spark him a bit, didn't it? Well, they say fear is the father of courage. Yeah, but if it's somebody else's fear, 
That can make you a stepchild. Let's go. We just got here. So did that Carl snake. Perhaps you're right. The axle's dry as a chip. Didn't you bring any grease? No, I didn't. What am I supposed to be, a blacksmith? Fletcher. What do you want? You will return to the village of my people. Why? My father wishes to honor you. Honor me? He is old. His ways are ancient. He believes you are a god. Fletcher, I don't trust them. They won't harm us. You heard him. They think I'm a god. Tom. Tom Mayberry. Well, Boone, you old beaver hound. John, this here's Daniel Boone. John Bridger, my partner in developing this land. Howdy. John, this is my friend Mingo. Tom Mayberry, John Bridger. How do you do, gentlemen? Pleasure, I'm sure. Well, oh, he's been educated. Daniel, what brings you traipsing down here to Florida? Well, I want to see some of that land you were telling me about last summer. Well, we got plenty of it. Come on to the house, and you can tell me all about it over black-eyed peas in hand. Black-eyed peas? I thought you said he was educated. <laughs> Well, that's about it, Tom. If we don't find new land for the settlers, the five nations may rebel and start the bloodiest uprising we've ever seen. We can't push them back much further than we already have. Well, you've come to the right place, Daniel. There's enough land here for everyone. Oh, then what about the Seminoles? The Seminoles never bother us. We don't bother them. We keep them in line. They know we won't sit still for any of their foolishness. Well, we were attacked by the Seminoles twice on the way here. You probably wanted into their territory. There's kind of an unwritten treaty exists between them and us. As long as we stay on our side of the fence, they stay in theirs. It's a good idea, Daniel, bringing more people here. Florida's fine country. Good soil. Sun shines bright just about every day in the year. Even the winters are warm. And we'll be right happy to have some new neighbors. Well, good. I'd like to see whatever maps you have to see where the boundaries exist between you and the Seminoles. Then Mingo and I'll do a little scouting and find out the most likely areas for new settlements. We'll be glad to help you any way we can and answer any questions you might have. Oh. Would you mind beginning right now? What's that? Hmm? No. No, that's Phineas. Phineas? Yeah, he's one of the original natives here. Take a look at him. Daniel, I have the feeling there's a great deal about Florida they haven't told us yet. <laughs> Show it to my people.
Tricks us. I will show you. You shall be called Mantiola, White God of the Air. Cola River is southwest of here, not far. The Indians call the area Chattahoochee's. The soil is excellent for tobacco. What do you want? This is Seminole land. The earth, the trees, the sky. What you take from it belongs to the Seminole. You pay tribute now. We don't want no truck with you. Now get out of here. What kind of tribute? Food and skins. Seminole has never demanded payment before. We've always lived in peace together. Your father is an honorable chief. The Seminole is here first. The land is ours. You pay tribute. Where did the Seminole learn the word tribute? You pay. We'll give you a tribute, all right? Now hold it, John. We're not paying you anything. You're in our territory now. This is our land, you know that. We're not paying tribute to you or to anyone else for working our own land. Now you go back and tell that to Hotala. <laughs> I can't understand it. Otala's never given us any trouble before. I'll just have to go and have a talk with him. Hold on, Tom. Do you know him? Well, not really. I met him once when we first moved in. I'll just have to make him understand that we're not going to sit still for this kind of blackmail. Tom, you go to talk to the Seminoles with that kind of notion, you may be licked before you get started. Maybe you better let Mingo and me have a parley with Otala. All right. Bingo. Tracks here at the water's edge. The canoe is pulled ashore. Uh -huh. Well, just keep going. We don't have to look too hard. He'll find us. Once again, you enter the land of the Seminole. Why? Talk to Hautala, great chief of the Seminole. You were told that to enter our land meant death. Yet you are here. Your friend to Mantiola. I will let you explain. Mantiola? White god of the air. When 
did they capture you? I'm not a prisoner. You heard him. They call me Mantiolo, white god of the air. Oh, what is that supposed to mean? It means it's about time someone looked after the Seminole, protected his heritage, his interest. Well, that's where the Seminole learned the word tribute from you. I'm glad you're here, Boone. I was going to send for you. We have some business to discuss. We'll go down by the river. It's cooler there. For years now, the Seminoles have lived here in Florida lived in comfort and peace. Then the white man intruded. What's this all about, Fletcher? What's your stake in this? I told you. Someone's got to protect these people. They're a primitive society. A forgotten world until now. But there's beauty in their sheer simplicity. A quiet dignity about them. I won't see them deprived of what belongs to them by a pack of land-grabbing outsiders. That's why I'm here, Fletcher. There are some engines being pushed off their land, and I'm against it. But there's more than enough land for everybody right here in Florida. I'm going to see to it that the Seminoles get what's coming to them. If not by legal standards, by moral rights. Every settler on Seminole land must pay a tribute. Each new settler coming into Florida will pay $100 a head. You know what that means, Fletcher? It means killing on both sides. There's no need for that, Boone. Not if the Seminole gets his rightful share. The Seminole or you? You know, it seems to me you just might be given the best performance of your life, Fletcher. Play it to the hilt. Could be your last one. Don't come back here, Boone. The land of the Seminole is sacred. Trespassing is punishable by death. Take a good look, Mingo. Could be your last chance to see a real live god. I figure there's any stain harder to remove than blood, Mrs. Cameron. Or have they given you a new name, too, now that you're the wife of a god? What is he talking about? Your husband, Mantiola, the god of the air, has demanded tribute from the white settlers. Blood money, Mrs. Cameron. Blood money. talk to you. Not now, Rhonda. Fletcher, I said I wanted to talk to you alone, without your handmaiden. She doesn't understand English. Besides, she won't leave me. She's pledged to my comfort and protection. Go. Leave us. Mojina! Fletcher, I don't like what's been happening to you. <laughs> These ridiculous costumes. Calling you Mantiola. I think that you're actually beginning to believe all this nonsense. I'm trying to concentrate, Rhonda. What's this about making white settlers pay tribute? Fletcher. What are you trying to do? Are you going out of your mind? Are you really trying to play God? A God, savior, call it what you like. 
You don't believe all this mumbo-jumbo these savages are making over you. I believe in destiny, Rhonda. My own destiny. Something I was born to fulfill. It's the only thing that's made my life bearable. My hands. I've always felt a power in them. And I've thought how many other men have had such a feeling. Perhaps Attila felt it. Genghis Khan or Caesar. What made those men different than others in their time? They knew the magnetism of destiny, the obsession of power, pulling them, driving them to greatness. These natives, and that's what they are, natives, the Seminoles, the Shawnee, the Chippewa. What if someone, someone with intelligence, united them, all the tribes of America, organized and led them to reconquer what is rightfully theirs? We've got to nip it in the bud now before it gets out of hand. You give those Indians one pound of potatoes today, they'll want the whole field tomorrow. And burning it if they don't get it. I saw smoke signals two days ago. The Seminoles are up to something. Well, it's not the Seminoles, it's Fletcher Cameron. Ironic, isn't it, Daniel? First time we met Fletcher, the Seminoles were going to kill him. And we saved him from them so that they could make him a god. Well, it don't take much figuring to figure out that something's got to be done. Fletcher's a magician. Uh, illusionist. And a good one. Yeah. It's good enough for the Seminoles to make him some sort of god or king. He's probably the kind of man that's always hungered for power. He told us that much, but at the time, I didn't take much stock in it. Well, we were both deceived, Daniel. I took it to be a part of the act. Well, it's no longer an act. He's dangerous. Seminoles! miles from here. I wonder what he's doing in Seminole country. Jata. Isti. Simonale. Gun. Jata. Yes, the Simonola took. Hilako Mantulo. He says that the Choctaw are joining the Seminoles to fight against the white man. That's what those smoke signals meant. Why you? No, John. He says chiefs of other tribes are coming. Well, this means war. We'll be outnumbered 10 to 1. Fletcher. He's behind all of this. It began with him, and it's got to end with him. There's only one way to defang a snake nest to pull him out by the roots. Let's go. Where are you going, Dan? To steal a king. Creek and Chickasaw. 
Mm-hmm. And there's Fletcher. If he can convince those three to join with the Seminole, there's really going to be a war. Well, Daniel, how are we going to get him out of here? Well, you'll have to get to his equipment before he can go into his act. Why don't you work your way around behind his wagon? I'll stay here and watch the huts and the wagon. But you were warned about coming back here. It's out of my hands now. Bajo Coakley. Don't you know what happened to your friend? I know. That's why I've got to talk to you. Talk about what? Your husband. If he puts on his magic show for those chiefs out there, every white settler in Florida may die. What are you talking about? Hasn't he told you? I thought... I thought they were here for some kind of festival. A blood festival, Mrs. Cameron. Those chiefs out there are here to see the great power of Mantiola. If your husband convinces them that he's a god, he'll join with the Seminoles in war. Oh... What do you want of me? I want you to stop. No, no, You're the no. only one who can. You think I could talk to him? I tried to talk to him. He I won't listen talk, to me. Mrs. Cameron. You know his tricks, everything he does. If somehow, if everything he tried went wrong. Do you know what you're asking me to do? Do you know? Council of the four tribes is over, you will die. In there. And you took long enough. Now, just one more thing. Something they identify with, understand. A fish. I'll pull a fish out of the air, not out of the water. Now, they keep some fresh caught fish at the river's edge in a basket. Go get me one. You know, I can't, I, I can't touch one of those slimy things. All right, dip that leaf in some oil and check all the props carefully. I'll be right back.
Mantiola, the white god of the air, protector of all the Seminoles, welcomes you. The Choctaw honors Hotala, chief of the Seminole. He say you are God. We here to see. We'd better leave so that we can warn the settlers. No, we've got to stay. We've got to figure out a way to stop him somehow. This palm leaf, moist with the heavy dew of night, yet I shall cause it to burn with the brightest fire of heaven. No, Mantiola. Let them see it. As I said, a white man's trick, do you see? Like the spider, he dropped a small web over the headdress of Champagne. This is what made it fly into the air. He's not a god, he tricks us. I have lost honor in the face of my brothers. I am Mantiola. I am a god. If you're a god, the knife will not cut your skin. The blood will not flow. Keep away from me! Stay here. killed my son, but you stopped him. I only want peace between the Seminole and my people, Hotala. This man Fletcher, the one you call Mantiola, he used tricks. He's only a man, not a god. He has no power. He wanted power. Power that you could give him, you and all the other tribes. I believed he was a god. Where there is peace, Hotala, there is God. Why did you do it, Rhonda? Because it wasn't what you wanted. You don't want to hurt people. He's not that kind of man. What I really wanted most was 
your respect. Can you believe that? You have that. You've always had that. I love you. I hope you both find your rainbows in in New Orleans. Come on, Bingo. Daniel Bloom was a man, yes a big man. 